Hello, this is Pastor Matthew Woods from Grace Lutheran Church in New Albany, Indiana, and this is the weekly devotion for July 29th, 2024, last Monday of July already. Today's title, Some Assembly Required. Well, during my recent time off, I spent a majority of my time rebuilding a used playset I bought online. Previous owner had lived out south of Lexington, Kentucky, about an hour and a half drive. And we got a good low price, so we went to retrieve it. We took my son's truck, uh, hooked up the trailer, loaded uh, myself, Josh, and our neighbor Chase, a member of the church. And we took some tools along and we set on out. Uh, you might say it was a little adventure of sorts <laughs> for guys. Well, anyway, well, when we arrived at the address, things were a little crowded. That was interesting. Uh, the little cul-de-sac was very tiny, and thankfully, two of the driveways were open, so we could pull the trailer truck in and then back the trailer up and pull it around into another parking spot in front of the house that we were going to, uh, which was just big enough for the whole thing. It's crazy. Well, <clears throat> we finally got parked. We picked our space, and we went to work. We took our tools and uh, it took us about an hour and a half to dismantle it and finally load it just in time for the rain to come. Now, <clears throat> during my time off, I began reworking the whole playset because the cedar uh, wood on it that made it up was dry and it was weathered. So I decided uh, we're gonna play, uh, paint it a playful color green. But that meant power washing the parts and breaking it all the way down to the very basic level before we could actually paint it. There were many broken screws and things that had to be fixed. Um, but we replaced them all slowly, but surely we got it all painted and we got it all reworked. We also had to get a bunch of dirt to level off a spot in a shady area that was, uh, that would suit the, the, um, the playground set. Our whole area, our whole yard is just one long hill. There isn't a flat spot to be found. So we had to make one. And of course we had to go get some mulch to put around it and make sure that it's soft and and, and uh, the kids don't hurt themselves. But it came out looking great, and I'm hopeful that my grandbabies will get to use it for, for many years to come. I just thought about this, though. The whole project became sort of an object lesson for redemption. Now, we've taken something worn and dried out, and we've given it new paint and a new purpose and a new opportunity to be a playground again. It has literally been remade for, from what was old. Redemption, redemption is like this too. Anytime the Lord builds something, redemption is usually part of the picture. Lord knows better than most that all the material he works with, after all, are flawed and broken, dried out, uh, and uh, needs to be restored and made new again. Now, the Bible gives several examples of how this works. <clears throat> the first one that comes to mind, of course, is Noah's Ark. In Genesis chapter 6, the Lord commands Noah to build the ark and then gives the instructions and dimensions on how to build the ark, uh, complete with a single door on the side. Um, very representative of Christ, of course. I am the door. Noah took uh, at least 75 years to build the ark until the flood came. It's a long project. <clears throat> the Lord also instructed how the ark would be used, including the number of animals and kind of animals that would come aboard. It is within the ark that humanity is redeemed through a remnant from Noah's line. Some assembly required. Another example is 2 Samuel 7. David wants to build a temple to the Lord. Through Nathan the prophet, however, the Lord tells David that the Lord needed nothing from David. In fact, David received everything from the Lord. David had it all backwards. The Lord would be the one building a house for David, not the other way. And so, uh, verses 11 through 16, the Lord speaks through Nathan on the kind of house that the Lord would be building for David. It says, The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest, and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring and succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build the house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. 
When he does wrong, I will punish him with the rod wielded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hands. But my love will never be taken away from him, as I look as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. The house of the Lord builds the, the, the house that the Lord builds is an eternal kingdom, of course, of Jesus, from the line and lineage of, D, of David. It is the king that sits on David's throne who will redeem David and the world for that matter. So God will do some building ultimately through his offspring. This will be the house that we're talking about here. Perhaps my favorite restoration, though, is the culmination of all scripture, namely that we, you and I, are the ones made new. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15 speak of the old being replaced by the new. 2 Corinthians 5, for example, says, For we know that if this earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Verse 4, while, For while we were in this tent, we groan in our burden, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. In verse 7, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, <laughs> He is a new creation. The old is gone and the new is here. Now, 1 Corinthians 15 uh, adds a, a little more to this when it talks about the resurrection of the dead. Here's what it says. It further emphasizes what's built, okay? Verse 42. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. See the change? It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, but it is raised in power. It is sown in natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. Verse 51, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. You see, the ultimate remake, the ultimate rebuild is us. It's us and Jesus. Like our playground set, we will be completely dismantled so that the old self is replaced completely with something new. When our bodies are dried and withered, the resurrection will come along, and <clears throat> along with more than just a paint job, you might say, more than just with new screws, thank goodness. Death, in fact, is wiped out so that we are given an entirely new self to match a soul that has been redeemed in Christ. For now, we have instructions in God's word telling us to prepare for our own resurrection. We have the word and the sacraments as tools that reshape and restore us through faith. What's more is that Jesus has traveled to us uh, as we had to go get the place set in the same way. He comes to us, pays the price, and then brings us back with him to his home where we are covered not with paint but with his righteousness. Some assembly required, right? Jesus puts us all together so everything is provided. Piece by piece, little by little, we are remade through our course of life, daily, daily remade more and more into his image. Isn't that great? Some assembly required. Well, some assembly has been required and Jesus has fulfilled those requirements. And so take heart. You are being made new in the image of God. This is our promise. Well, may the Lord bless you this week, and may he bless us as um, we carry on in our, in our lives and in our duties this week. Uh, may we honor God in what we do, but most of all, may we have the peace of God that goes with us that can only come through Jesus. Uh, God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.